Hello and welcome to more great VFL action in pro football. Well, perhaps the only game without any real significance to the finals in round 22 was that played at the MCG between Geelong and Richmond. Two sides have been so inconsistent and so disappointing for their respective coaches throughout the season. Richmond have suffered six losses on the trot. Geelong, on the other hand, have been hot and cold. But one thing's for sure, both were very keen to see if they could finish the season on a winning note. Let's see how that game pans out as we take you now to the MCG and pick up the action at the opening bounce of the first quarter. Welcome to the MCG for Pro Football's Match of the Day featuring Geelong and Richmond. The toss won by Michael Turner of the Cats. Geelong kicking to the left of screen to the punt road end of the ground. We had a heavy shower here about half an hour ago but brilliant sunshine now, terrific conditions and uh, the siren Sounds to start the match. The umpires are Sheehan and Saville. Michael Roach starting off in the ruck for the Tigers. He's beaten that time. Bruns goes in there. He can't get it out. A scramble of players. The umpire will bounce. Barry Rollings uh, due to play his last game today. Tossed for the Tigers and then ran off the ground. The end of a great career. Roach up over the top. It'll be a free kick to Geelong. And it will be taken by Damian Burke. Cats away, out wide. Diving attempt there. Morgan lines up on the left foot. He slammed it through. And the Cats have got the first goal on the board at the 41 second mark of the first quarter here at the MCG. A snap by Darren Morgan. Just the start the Cats wanted. Ruck infringement against Roach and then Morgan coming through the left footer slamming it through from about 35 metres out and what a great start for John Devine's Geelong side here very cool the conditions here at the MCG so we see Burke against Roach again in the middle Burke gets the tap down a ruckman with great potential the umpires come in and will bounce again Jess has started down at full forward for the Tigers. Mark Lee in the square, leaving the ruck work to Roach. Tigers get it out. Chance for Rioli coming through. Rides the bump. Thrown out that time by Geary. Chance for Palm. Anir in there. Tries to scoop it out. Out wide. Geary in the front position. Waitman out there. The ball will stop on the, the practice wicket area. Geary picks it up cleanly. Sees the pass, and it's a good one to Francis. Ignores the lead from Jess. He'll go long looking for Poole. Can't take the mark. Geelong players everywhere. Bruns gets the hand pass out, looking for fullback Cleave. Cleave clears. The kick, not a good one. And over the boundary line, free kick to be taken by Richard Geary. One scoring shot so far. A goal to Geelong's Darren Morgan. Pass on. Over into the centre of the ground. High flyer then was Landy. Couldn't take the mark. Chance for the Tigers. Put off balance at the last moment. Ball in the wide open spaces. Five Geelong players there. No one else. Burke with a hand pass across. And Geelong with the opportunity to clear. The hand pass then across from Christensen to Bright. Bright looking for Ablett in the front position. Good grab. Can't take it on the second. Hand pass then from Bauer. Tigers bit of sloppy play on the back line they're under pressure and there'll be a free kick going Richmond's way and taken by Smith Smith the Roach Roach the good hand pass across Tigers off and running plenty of danger there but they're out of it a near good looking pass lovely one-handed mark taken by Francis Francis across to Trevor Poole runs in 15 meters 12 meters and slams it through the Tigers have answered Trevor Poole kicking their first goal at the three and a half minute mark and that was good play Tigers
Richmond players wearing the black armbands today in uh, a sign of respect to one of the great recruiting men in recent history, Harry Jenkins, the man with a million dollar eyes who found Royce Hart down in Tasmania back in the mid 60s and a string of other fine players for the Tigers. Back in the centre, it's Roach against Burke. Roach gets the tap this time. Bruns is there. Roach follows up. Bruns comes out with the ball. No one really been able to get the ball out of the centre cleanly yet. This time it'll be Burke who goes for the punch and misses it. Tigers this time. I should say Cats. Passes a beauty to Turner. Fumbles, can't quite grab the mark on the third try. Mossop in there calling for the ball. Turner swings it back into play. Bounces and out of bounds. The umpire says it was out on the full. The free kick to be taken by Craig Smith. Play with a good future. Looks for Roach. Disco takes the mark. Half back line. Tries to steady things down. The hand pass across to Dale Waitman. Given plenty of instructions there by Burton. The hand passing's good. Palm back to Waitman. This is better play by the Tigers. The bounce in the centre. Waitman looking for the pass. He's usually spot on. Nothing wrong with that one too. Wally Eustace takes the mark. 45 metres out. Great piece of play starting on the back line with Smith and Roach. Finishing right up forward with Mark Eustace. Play of the day by the Tigers. Can they top it off with a goal? Eustace, 45 yards out. The kick, swinging back. Hits the post. Deserved better the piece of play, but Richmond 1-1, one, one, Geelong 1 straight. Bright kicks in, goes wide. Finds a teammate out there in Boss. Boss's long kinger, kick around the boundary. Damian Burke. Bruns. Back to Burke. Not a good hand pass. He's the master of the hand pass if he can get his hand to it. Waitman gets it out. Could have been holding the man. Indeed it is. Free kick will go Geelong's way. To the centre of the ground. Cats doing just that bit more at the moment. Streaming out of the centre. Good interception there. Long kick for goal, it looks good. And it's through for a goal. Good piece of play by the Cats. Geelong, two goals straight. Richmond, 1-1-7, five points the margin. We've been playing six minutes and 40 seconds into the first quarter. Pro football's match of the day at the MCG. See if we can pick up the player who kicked that goal. Damien Drum, it was. Another bounce in the centre. The umpires Sheehan and Saville here at the MCG. A crowd of around uh, 12,000. The game has no bearing on the five. This the last of the home and away series for 1986. Geary. Been in quite a few things so far. Roach with the opportunity. He's in the front position. Can't quite get down there, but he follows up well. That's more the desperation they want. Couch comes out of the centre on the left foot, goes wide. He's looking for Ablett. It'll beat Ablett. He slides over. And the man with the job today is Jeff Hogg. What a job it is too. Gary Ablett's kicked 25 goals in the last five matches. And certainly has the tag of match winner. Punch down. Tigers get it out. A near... Tries to kick it off the ground. He can't do it. It's Bruns who swings it back. Tigers in the front position. Fumbled mark there. Trying to keep it in is number 39, Craig Smith. The tap back. Good play. Good cool play on the back line. Smith gets the uh, pass away. And the Tigers out of trouble for the time being. Straight down the centre. Looking for Mark Lee. Right through the big fella's hands. Here's the chance now for the Cats to take the pressure off. Couch. 
gets around nicely evaded pool gets the kick in but it's a tiger mark down there on the half back line and the pass straight over to morris rioli rioli's kick is a trimmer right across the center of the ground he's found ryan ryan on the left foot looking for jimmy jess and a great mark by the ghost hand passes straight away to dale waitman waitman's off like a flash he's hotly pursued by bright waitman should be first to his feet he is juggles it on his head bright's in there and the umpire will come in and bounce it was a great mark by jess he heard the uh, the call from waitman delivered the hand pass perfectly waitman ran into the pocket but had no one to kick it to and so we'll have a bounce lee in there for, in the ruck out to bright bright with the hand pass it's intercepted francis there on the left foot he'll swing it round it's a high kick jess in the front position perfectly placed just gets underneath it a little here comes pool gets rid of one player and two the hand pass back to eustace tiger's still in a good position here eustace can't quite pick it up does that time swings it round it's not a good kick and the mark will be taken by damian drum hand pass off again to mark boss boss looking for ablett in the front position good piece of uh, play by the tigers or is it in the back against Jeff Hogg to be taken by Gary Ablett kick more than 50 for the season he's at the 50 meter line now kick torpedo off the side of the boot Roach can't take it taken by Mossop Mossop to Turner Turner lines up it looks good third goal of the Cats Michael Turner the skipper takes the hand pass from big John Mossop and Geelong move on to three goals straight 18 Richmond 1-1-7 18 plays seven ten and a half minutes into the first quarter of pro football's match of the day at the mcg and good mark then by john mossop over to turner and turner snaps the goal the goal kickers for geelong so far turner morgan and damian drum roach against burke in the center the high flyers roach decides to take it out of the air his kick nowhere in particular and uh, if it hadn't have been a mark it would have been a free kick and Michael Schultz over to Terry Bright right on the left foot finds Darcy makes a bit of a mess of it but recovers well the hand pass back into the center of the ground back to boss boss with a hand pass finds Rioli here's danger Rioli to Waitman two of the ha best hand passes in league football Jimmy Jess can't do much about it the pass wasn't a good one from the flea Terry Bright being playing a very good game right across the half back line he gets it across to michael lennigan or was it david o'keefe sorry david o'keefe playing game number 50 and the cats into attack again des ryan at the back will take the free kick hand passes to bauer bauer's kick not a good one makes it hard for landy the former geelong player the left foot's a beauty Morris Rioli behind, flies, takes the mark, over to Anir. Tigers in trouble, all sorts of trouble. Might be lucky to get out of it, and there'll be a bounce. Palm limping as he comes out of that encounter. Sure enough, straight to Palm again. Tigers away. free kick go to Philip Egan good to see Egan back in the side had a terrific pre-season and was playing well until injured he's looking for Jess the kick falls well short and it's marked there by Geelong's Damian Burke they're playing on very quickly it's Jess who comes out with the ball he's tackled hasn't got the ball yes he has says the umpire the uh, crowd don't like it either is Jimmy Jess that's the possession rule for you Rioli with the one-hander it's a beauty looks for the hand pass they've been tentative the Tigers the kick right up into the square Poole can't mark it dives on the ball players diving everywhere it'll be a Geelong free kick players down and uh, it could have almost been a shoulder or a rib there that's uh, Egan 
very uncomfortable indeed. The umpire pulling things up, waiting for the trainers to move off with Philip Egan. Let's hope it's not too serious. Right it is with a long torpedo holding up there Burke and Lee underneath it. Burke gets the fist and it's over the boundary line. Three goals straight Geelong, Richmond 1-1-7, 14 minutes gone in the first quarter. Both sides reasonably even. Lee and Burke. Eustace comes out with the ball, swings it round. Geelong playing in front and the mark taken then by Schultz. He's gone out looking for the tall Damien Burke. Can't hold the mark. Ball kept in play. But just as Eustace went to hand pass it, he was pushed towards the line and there'll be a throw in. Just in front of the coach's box. Coaches John Devine and Tony Jewell, I think both reasonably unhappy with the start. Been some scrappy footy. Landy with a kick in looking for Jess. Over the top of Jess's head. Cats away. Here's one for the sprinters. Francis in the front position. He's hotly pressed, gets the tap back, that's good football to Rioli. Coming into things a bit earlier today, the kick up into the pocket, Pool. Jess. Jess snaps it over his shoulder, it's a good looking kick, it's a goal to Jimmy Jess. The Tigers second, Richmond moved to 2-1-13, they trail Geelong by five points, 15 minutes into the first quarter. River Poole not being able to quite hold onto the ball. Fell to the ground. Jimmy Jess all by himself saw the opportunity on the right foot and sent it through for a goal. Back in the centre, it's Roach and Burke. Scrappy play there. The umpire will bounce again. The flag's blowing straight down the ground, perhaps favouring uh, Geelong to the tune of a goal or two, but it's always hard to tell here at the MCG. Cats away again. The bounce favours Ablett. He's in the front position, does it beautifully too. Round on the left foot from 55 metres out into the square, centres it beautifully. The ball tapped in by Mossop. Big John Mossop does the work, doubles back. Kicked off the ground by Des Ryan. Towards the line. Fitzgerald swings it back into play. Good try then by uh, Craig Smith. But it's John Anir who takes the pressure off. All Geelong here. Chance for Neville Bruns. Swings round on his right foot. He's looking for Mossop. Got away from his opponent. Mossop takes the mark. Now John Mossop is about 35 metres out. He's kicking with the aid of the breeze. And the big fellow on an angle of about 45 degrees has the chance to kick Geelong's fourth straight. The kick's a shocker. Michael Roach in there does the hard work. Ryan hand passes out. That's intentional and the umpire will pay it as such and the free kick will be taken by Gary Ablett. Strange piece of play because the umpires are red hot when they're that blatant. Ablett will try and run around or look for the pass. He's gone for the latter. Very loose, the Richmond defence at the moment. There are a number of uh, leads open. Options available from 45 metres out. The kick through for Geelong's first behind of the day. Geelong move on to three goals one. Richmond two goals one. Darcy's kick just offline. Richmond ball back into play mighty quickly these days. Over to Landy. Landy's pass. Nice looking one looking for Francis. Peter Francis hand pass across to Mark Eustace. Eustace to Burton. Richmond off and running. They look good when they're moving this fast. Looking for Jess. Jess off the ground, that could almost be a mark, or in the back, it'll be in the back, to be taken by Trevor Poole. Young player that Richmond want firing, over to Waitman, usually terrific disposal, he's gone out wide, looking for Lee. That's a good tackle. 
hand pass out again Egan hand pass to Jess he's pushed in the back can't recover and Geelong take all the pressure off with Christensen running the ball out of the back line looking for, for Ablett couldn't find him that time there's a push in the back play on Tigers With me in the commentary position, smelling of liniment, is Michael Roberts. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Not bad. It's been a very even start. Morris Rioli with the ball. He's been in uh, quite a bit of the play so far. That one smothered off the boot. Rioli again. Rare to see him fumble like this. Tigers go forward. Hard mark. Bit too hard then for Michael Lennigan. The ball over the boundary line for a throw in. Well, Robbo, it was uh, interesting to see the scoreboard in the reserves. Richmond won their match quite comfortably against the Cats, but I don't think the percentage would have been enough to push it into the finals. No, unfortunately, we were relying on two sides in the finals to get beaten. And we were to win. We, we uh, held up our end, but uh, unfortunately, those sides got beaten, so uh, we miss out this year. Well, that uh, kick from Waitman, straight up in the air. Team of players, the umpire will bounce. It what are the conditions like out there? I was just going to mention that, Stephen. It was uh, raining about half an hour ago, even hail. Uh, a light uh, shower of hail came over the ground, but uh, perfect sunshine now. Is the wind favouring the punt road end? Yes, it is. It's favouring that uh, punt road end. Well, here's a chance now for Jimmy Jess. He's in the front position. Eustace got the ball out pretty well. Jess will use his strength. He's already kicked one. The hand pass back to Eustace. Eustace swings it around. Geelong players in the front position. Not a good performance then. Off the rubber chest and the ball over the boundary line. And... Uh, Johnny Anir, who must be one of the favourites for Richmond's Jack Dyer trophy this year. Yeah, he's had a, a really good year. Him and um, Mark Eusis on the ball have been uh, instrumental this year for us. Lee took the ball out. It's Bruns who comes out with it. He gets it back to Marty Christensen. Cats away and running again. Michael Roach in the ruck. It's a big drop punt. It's a high one. Egan in the front position could almost have taken the mark, but he recovers beautifully. Christensen again, dummies the hand pass, back again, and we'll have a throw in. Good to see uh, Jackie Egan out there too, he's been out with injury, um, probably find it hard because he's, his fitness is probably down, worked very hard in the gym. He just got crunched before you joined us, and uh, Lee cops one from Burke, he'll he square, wouldn't like he'll that. square up now. <laughs> <laughs> Chance now for Brioli, who's uh, really moving into top gear early. Hand pass from Meniers of Beauty over to Francis. Francis lines up from 35 metres out, puts it through, scores a level here at the MCG. Good goal for the Tigers, we needed that. Peter Francis made plenty of room uh, for himself. And the danger men for the Tigers are beginning to fire. Rioli, Anir, Waitman, and if you can get those three players going, you've got a head start. Tony uh, will be probably asking uh, Disco Roach to do a hell of a lot on the ball for us too. Help Mark Lee out. Damien Burke, I think, is one of the, the up-and-coming ruckmen in league football. And uh, he's been doing uh, plenty of good work at the centre bounces. But I should think that they'd be hoping that Michael Roach would do a lot of work around the ground. It's really important to uh, get the ball out of the centre, especially in today's football. Towards the boundary line, the uh, free kick will go against... Geelong against Paul Couch, putting it out on the full. Burton, who's been missed this season. Back to Waitman, to Landy. The throw out. The umpire says play on. Bright, who's had a terrific game so far, gets it out this time. Geelong off and running. They're looking for John Mossop down there. Bright in the front position. Beats everyone over the back. Tigers away, and it will come away through Jeff Hogg. Very talented footballer, that Craig Smith. Young fellow for the Tigers. He's a really good player. Geary. In there is Trevor Poole, the hand pass out by Boss to Bruns. Bruns' kick straight up in the air. Michael Roach takes the mark. Tony's also stressed to the players to really start crumbing too. You notice about four players ran the centre half forward then just to try and crumb that ball. Well, that was one of those uh, those kicks you dread. A good, a good piece of smothering there. John Mossop. Brendan Bauer, number 31, a clash of heads. 
turn into a terrific afternoon here at the MCG. Let's hope the bad weather is behind us. Roach beats Moss up that time. Bruns kicks it over his shoulder. Palm. Can't take, take the mark that time. Coming through is Geelong's Barry Stoneham. Cats away this time. Looking for Turner already. Kick one. The danger man up forward. His kick. Not good. And here's the chance for the Tigers. Got three players out here all by themselves. They'll clear leisurely here. Looking for Egan, the kick. It's Phil Egan in the perfect position for the sit. A hand pass to Landy. Landy on the right foot. Looking for Poole. He's held back. Bruns in plenty of running. Couch, the centre, leads on everywhere. And the ball finally marked there by John Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald's kick finds a teammate. It's Marty Christensen. Too far out to score, even with the aid of the breeze. Kick in finds Couch, lines up on the left foot. That's a good looking kick, might hit the post, or does it just get through? Terrible play, terrible play by Richmond. And then we had a real run on then four players, and just through bad skill errors, they were able to run it down and score a goal. Paul Couch kicks his first. Geelong move on to 4 1 25 on Pro Football scoreboard. Richmond 3 1 19. A goal the difference as we approach time on in the first quarter here at the MCG. I noticed uh, Waitman ran down to um, probably get up a few of the players then for fooling around with the ball. Have a word to them, you mean? That's the one. That's the one. Back in the centre. Michael Roach comes in rucking for Richmond. The tap down. Coming out with it's John Fitzgerald. Straight down the ground. Man in front will take the mark. It's a good juggling mark taken by the Geelong skipper. Mickey Turner. He's kicked a goal. He's a matter of... Uh, 45 metres out, he's directly in front with the wind over the shoulder. And Michael Turner does hate a goal. He's been playing quite well this year, up forward. Turner has kicked 44 goals for the season before today's match. He's still on 44. He's kicked one more, 45, plus a behind. There was some talk that the 200 game veteran might uh, be playing his last game in the paper during the week. One can only hope that's not right. I was just noticing what good Nicky was in. I think he'd go on for another year. Roach with a hand pass across to Turner. Back to Waitman. Uses his pace. Caught then by Ablett. Unusual to see Gary Ablett chase. Back into the centre of the ground. Temp marked then by Landy. Bright. Been one of the best players on the ground in the first quarter. Looks for the pass. Finds Turner. Turner leading well. Michael Roach all by himself down there. Back at full back unwittingly. And that one's through for another behind to Turner. Turner's giving plenty of lead down there. He's uh, creating a, f a few problems for Richmond. Michael Roach uh, deciding to have a bit of a run. Out to the 40 metre line. It was like gridiron. And finds uh, Mark Lee. Just retarded a little bit, uh, Mark. Having a word or two to the umpire. Everything slowed down. Leap off. The hand pass is on. It's not a bad one to Mark Eustace either. Palm. Uh, sorry, David Palm. Palm's kick. He's looking for Jess. Jess uses his body well. Makes the, makes the play for Francis. Francis swings it back towards goal. He's offline. And the ball will be out of bounds on the full. As you said, Stephen, it's unusual to see uh, Morris Rioli fumble. He's fumbled a couple of times. He usually snaps those ones up and puts them through. He's getting in the play a lot more. and He's hitting a lot more kicks than uh, last time I saw uh, Richmond play a couple of weeks ago. Eight points the difference here at the MCG. Favouring Geelong 27 and a half minutes into the first quarter. Roach with a sit as the ball punched away from him. Here's the chance for the Cats to go forward again. The hand pass on to Morgan. Morgan on the left foot, sees the pass, finds Bruns. Bruns plays on straight away. Passes a boomer, finds Michael Turner. 35 metres out directly in front. Turner's already had three shots for goal in this first quarter. Bruns has picked up a fair few kicks too. He's working hard. Forty-five goals for the season, Michael Turner. Chance for his second for the match. That's a better looking kick. The goal umpire doesn't move. Geelong move on to 5-3-33. Richmond 3-1-19, 28 and a half minutes. In this period of time, the Tigers really need a couple of goals or even one before uh, quarter time. 
What was the ploy with having Barry Rollings coming out on the ground? Just uh, say farewell. Just a salute to Barry. He's been a, a fantastic player at Richmond. Been a real leader, very conscientious person, and uh, it was just a tribute to him. Something like 230 games, 80 with Hawthorne, and 130, 140 with Richmond. Free kick will go to uh, Geelong. It'll be taken by Morgan. Not the sort of free kick or the time to give it away. Looking for Ablett. Ablett should mark this one. Does. Uses all his experience and all his class. Settles back. And Gary Ablett, who has not kicked a goal, is only 30 metres out. Slightest of angles with the breeze. And a chance to make it a six-goal quarter for the Cats. The drop punt stabs at it. Offline, through for behind, and a let off. So at quarter time, Geelong 5 4 34, lead Richmond 3 1 19, and we'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment. Welcome back to the MCG for Pro Football's match of the day. I'm Stephen Phillips with me, Michael Roberts, and Richmond and Geelong is the game. Richmond 3 1 19 at quarter time, trail Geelong by 15 points. That's not much when you consider there's a strong wind blowing straight down the ground and this quarter it will belong to the Tigers. Michael Roach in the ruck, taps the ball down. Francis can't get it out. Tangle of players in there. Finally comes out Roach uh, in there too, kicked off the ground by Palm. Morris Rioli takes the mark. Plays on. Hand pass over to Geary. Kicks a beauty, finds Mark Lee. Lee looks to play on, decides against it, and uh, will line up from about 35 metres out. How important is it to get it out of that centre? Just caught everyone out of out of wares and uh, went straight to Morris Rioli, turned around, gave it to Geary, and it's with Mark Lee now having a shot for the goal. The kick, a high one, Jimmy Jess claps it through. Goal to the Tigers, that's what they wanted. Richmond move on to 4-1, 25, Geelong 5-4, 34, took 50 seconds, and that's Mark Lee's first. It's what the Tigers wanted, we have to score a couple of goals now. Uh, put us well right back into the second quarter. Good kick by Mark Lee too. He's pretty reliable in those straight shots. Nine points the difference. And that breeze uh, still very fresh here at the MCG. Bit of cloud around, but uh, quite a sunny afternoon after a very uh, cold and rainy start to the day. Landy has his kick smothered. Christensen with a high torpedo up towards centre half forward. Mark taken by Turner. He's proving a real problem for uh, Chris uh, Smith down there in the forward line. He's already kicked two goals too. Kick looking for Ablett. Comes in from the side. Mossop's there. He's well tackled. Could well have been dropping the ball. Ablett kicks it off the ground. Hits the point post on the full, was it? I don't know what the boundary umpire was doing then. I don't think the ball went out of bounds then. We'll have a throw in in the forward pocket. And it will be Roach against Mossop. Roach ducks around in the front position. Mossop takes the ball. Plenty of pressure there. Applied by Burton, I think. And the free kick will go to Geelong. Can't afford to give those free kicks in front of goal like that. John Fitzgerald. We'll just check his statistics as he comes through. It's a good kick. He's fifth game and that's his fourth goal in league football I was going to stay, say Stephen I uh, haven't seen this uh, player before relatively new John game. Fitzgerald puts through his first and Geelong answer they move on to six goals 440 Richmond four goals one 25 they've answered Richmond uh, straight away it shows that they're really trying to go in hard Geelong really concentrating hard Roach against Mossop. Uh, Roach against uh, Burke, I should say. Geary has the ball taken away from him. Finally, it's kicked out that time by Couch. Marked on the back line by Smith. Goes wide. Here's a chance for the Tigers now. Landy looks for the hand pass to Geary. Decides against it. Kicks on the right foot. He'll look for Mark Lee. Lee drops the mark. Follows through nicely. The umpire says that's too high. And the free kick. A woeful decision, that. Running in was Craig Cleave. He's still a bit uh, shaken. Not quite sure where he is. And uh, Mark Lee, who could have uh, taken the mark perhaps, but did recover well. It's 
should have punched then. Bright it is, terrific player in the first quarter, gets away on the left foot, around the boundary line, and the mark is taken there by Mark Yates. Class player, Yates to Bruns. Bruns swings around, he's caught then by Waitman. It's Couch on the left foot, swings it in towards centre-half forward. Smith comes out. Punch towards the boundary line, Bruns. The kick straight up in the air, and the oohs and ahs in the outer compounded by the news on the scoreboard that Essendon have only kicked one behind in the first quarter and North Melbourne are trying to keep their finals hopes alive by kicking 8-5. Big start out at Windy Hill. But we've got a tight one on our hands at the MCG as Waitman looks for the short pass, finds Jimmy Jess and the ghost is 45 metres out with a chance to kick his second. Loves a goal, Jimmy Jess. There's no doubt he'll make the distance. The drop punt. Just offline, through for behind. Tigers 4-2, Cats 6-4. 14 points the difference, five minutes into the quarter. Terry Bright to kick in. As I said, uh, he's been a very damaging player in defence, just as the other veteran Michael Turner's been in attack. Ablett miles out from goal. In fact, he's on the half-back flank at the moment. Beautiful looking torpedo into the breeze, covering all of 55 metres, looking for Turner. Turner taps the ball down, we'll have a throw in. Not a big crowd here at the MCG. Nothing really hinging on the game except pride. It's pretty important that uh, Richmond finish off the year with a win because we really were playing well midstream of the season and uh, We've crashed a little bit. Geary looking for Lee. Good thump down. Coming through a Richmond player's left, right and centre. But it's a Geelong man who comes out with the ball. Turner. He's in there fighting hard. Katz looking better up forward than Richmond. Ryan eludes Morgan. The Katz just uh, a bit cooler. Morgan on the left foot. Lines up. Looks good. It's a goal. Fantastic goal there by Morgan. Darren Morgan kicks his second. Six and a half minutes into the second quarter. And Geelong open up that lead to 20 points. That was a great goal actually because uh, Morgan featured in about three aspects of the game. Smothered the ball, went to Mossop. Mossop gave it back in a running goal from that uh, side on his left foot. It was fantastic. I think he might be a natural left footer. That one looked just a touch too fluid. Damien Burke back in the centre. Against Michael Roach. Burke gets the tap down. Richmond not grabbing the ball at the first bite. And you've got to really do that on a day like today. John and Neer at the bottom of that pack. Richmond have to bridge this gap like it's 20 points difference now. And we're just into the second quarter. Hand pass out. Here's the chance for Yates. He goes wide looking for Morgan again. Favours the left foot. And uh, Dale Waitman. A hand pass, just a bit too slick for everyone, but Jeff Hoggery covers, decides on the bounce. He's got an acre. Goes straight down the ground looking for Roach. Roach with a beautiful hand pass to find Smith. That's better play, Tigers. The kick out looking for Egan. Egan tries for the one-hander. Jimmy Jess in the front position. Tries to tap on. Always going to be difficult. Coming through then is Paul Morrish. Morrish's kick is offline and through for a behind. I think he's just come on, hasn't he, Stephen? Could have been his first uh, kick in league football. Could have resulted in a goal. Terry Bright. Short pass then. Cole. Bit of pressure on down there. But it'll be Paul Couch who hand passes across. Oh, what a hand pass. Fumble by Lennigan gives uh, Landy the chance. Back to Roach over to Geary. Geary's hand pass to Waitman. Waitman decides to uh, have a bit of a kick towards the square. Pools down there. And the goal will be paid to the Tigers. Fantastic goal by Dale Waitman. Kicked by Waitman and great play by Trevor Poole, who used his body and uh, held off two Geelong defenders. Waitman kicks his first for the day. Judged the distance perfectly. Richmond 5-3-33, Geelong 7-4. Lead by 13 points. That was a good goal, actually, because the Tigers started to run down like, rugby, like a rugby style. 
Some great shepherding down there in the last line of defence. Oh, big kick. Francis kicks it straight up in the air. Here's one for the high flyers. Geelong players everywhere. They come out with the ball. Bruns swings it out to the wing position. Francis. Front. Three Geelong players there. Hence plenty of loose men down the field. The near over runs it. A lovely bump by uh, Waitman. And uh, that didn't look it was uh, as though it was over the boundary line. And the crowd were very unhappy with that, and quite rightly so. Lee in the front position. Could well have been pushed in the back. Tap out, it's Morgan. Here's a chance for the Tigers again. Waitman from 45 metres out. Lines up. Jimmy Jess. The umpire has come in and uh, checked on things. Just a bit hard to pick up exactly what happened there. But Jess looked as though he was going to leave it, then made an attempt, and the ball finally threw for behind. 11 points the difference, the Cats in front. Richmond have picked up their pace a little bit, uh, starting to run past, accepting handballs. Uh, but Geelong seem to be crumbing a lot better, seem to be getting to the base of packs and breaking it up a bit. Good grab then by Eustace. Swings around on his right foot. Intercepted and kicked away by Fitzgerald. Great one-hander by Ablett. One of the marks of the day. That young Fitzgerald's playing one. Well. He's starting to impress me. Ablett, 60 metres out. He thinks he can kick it, does he? Well, let's have a good look at it. Topsy-turvy looking kick. It's not a bad one. How about that for a great goal by Gary Ablett? Unbelievable. That was uh, 60 metres out. And Gary Ablett takes the one-hander and then steers it through. And uh, what a way to bring up your first goal of the day. He didn't really kick that properly. He was going for a torpedo. Ended up like a floating punt that just seemed to sail through. But a good 60 metres out from goal. And it bounced three or four yards through. And I think everyone's still stunned. Three goals the difference. Bruns, hand pass to Morgan, who's playing a terrific game. Looking for Turner. Turner in the front position. Tigers, chance to clear through Eustace. The hand pass out. Plenty of hard work needed. Tigers looking very scrambly at times. I think that's Geelong's pressure. They're really uh, working hard, Geelong. Putting a lot of pressure through tackling on Richmond, and that's uh, causing a lot of fumbling. The Geelong runner, one Mickey Grapsis by name, working overtime, sending the messages out. It's Mossop gets the ball out nicely. Couch looks for and finds uh, Ablett, who's about uh, two metres out. He's a freak, this man. He's just kicked the longest goal you'd ever see. Now he's on the boundary line. Don't be surprised if he doesn't kick this. Let's see how far he runs around. Here it goes, swings it back, looks okay, it's his second in a matter of a minute. Gary Ablett pushes the uh, Cats four goals ahead at the 12 and a half minute mark of the second quarter. He never ceases to amaze me, Ablett. What he can do with the football. 5-4 Richmond, Geelong, nine goals for 12 and a half minutes into the second quarter in pro football's match of the day. He's averaged five goals a week since he had his little break during the season. Mark Lee back in the centre. Rucking for the Tigers. Here's a chance for Francis on the left foot. Swings it out looking for Jess. Not a terrific uh, pass to your full forward. It's all Geelong down there, and they should clear pretty easily. Geelong are coming well, really getting to the base of packs and, and starting to break the game up in the forward line and in the back line. Lennigan's pass looks for Barry Stoneham. Bauer. And uh, a fairly simple mark taken by the Cats. They're off and running again through Michael Cole. Cole goes wide looking for Terry Bright. Bright quite content to slow things down because there are too many Richmond players around. Geelong seem to be running it into their forward line a lot better than Richmond. Number 44 out there is Paul Morrish. Makes a bit of a mess of that one. And Ablett again. 45 metres out. 
he's called the second quarter his. Good skill over there by Geelong, good quick hands. That's the difference between the two sides. Now let's have a look and see if Gary Ablett can kick his third goal in a row for the Cats. High kick, it'll be offline and through for a behind. Very hard to kick out there, that's probably the dead pocket of the MCG and the, the wind would, really, would have been blowing straight into his face. 25 points the difference, Cats well in command at the moment. Eustace, he'll look for Poole. Poole in the back position takes a nice mark, just drops it at the end, but he was grabbed by the ankle so that gives him time to steady. He's passed, looking for Jess. Jess in the front position. We've had Ablett kick one from the same distance at the other end. Now Jess, with the torpedo, might well make the distance. And that's exactly what he decides on. The kick is all of 55 metres. Hits the post, or through for a behind. One behind only. A walloping great kick by the former Avoca fullback. Richmond 5-5, five, five, Geelong 9-5. Just noticed, Stephen, that uh, Drum, Damien Drum's just come off the ground and uh, O'Keefe has just come on to palm. Cats off and running, Lennigan. Around to the wing position, he's looking for Bruns. Bruns can't pick it up, he's hotly pressed too. Swings it back into the centre. Yates and there'll be a throw in last time these two teams met you played on uh, Bruns yes I did yeah slippery customer yeah he's a pretty experienced little chap loves to have a go and uh, unfortunately we just got pipped on the post Waitman with a hand pass he's off and running a near looking for pool Geelong doing it ever so easily. Uh, it's a good tackle down there. The umpire says there'll be a free kick. Great tackle by Dale Waitman. And the Cats off and running again. They're making more of their opportunities at the moment, as reflected on the scoreboard. They've even got a touch of arrogance about them, Geelong, at the moment. The hand pass then from Couch is a beauty over to Mossop. Mossop looking for Ablett in the front position. Oh, breaks away. How easy is that? Ablett lines up. Slams it through. Three goals in a row to Gary Ablett. Richmond 5-5. Five, five. Geelong have crept away by five goals. And uh, that's at the 16 and a half minute mark. Gary say, Ablett has kicked three goals too. Would you say that uh, Ablett's the difference between the two sides in this quarter, Stephen? I certainly would. What a great piece of play by Ablett. In front of uh, Jeff Hogg on that, that occasion. Got his balance so quickly as he swung around. Slammed it through from about 15 metres on the angle for his third. Roach gets the tap down. Waitman weaves and turns. He's looking for the pass. Or will he have a goal? He'll line up from 45 metres out. It's offline. Through for a behind. Did everything right then. Had a kick characteristically offline. Had nowhere to had no one up forward, nowhere to run, Dale. He did well just getting his foot to the ball. Fitzgerald all by himself accepts the kick in. Pass, nothing wrong with that one. And off and running again, Michael Cole. Cole again. Kick, not a good one. Spoiling a good piece of play. Oh, Richmond player sliding into the fence down there. Looks like uh, Smith. Craig Smith. Tough job today of mining Michael Turner. He gets his, the pass across to his skipper, Mark Lee. Lee just waiting until Barry Stoneham gets out of the way and then comes through with his kick. Here's a chance now for the Tigers through Egan. The hand pass is on, or the pass. He's slung at the last moment. Bit slow getting rid of the ball then. Uh, Egan and the, the pass accepted then by Michael Lennigan. To Couch into the centre of the ground. Easy grab there taken by Yates. Yates from 55 metres out in towards goal. Will it run through offline? Through for a behind. 
few uh, Richmond players are down. We uh, really want to lift from a few of the individuals out there. Kick in. Two Tigers out there. It's two on one. And the good mark taken behind by Trevor Poole. Impressive player, Poole. He's been out through injury and it's good to see Pooley back. Hard man to stop. He's got Burton in the centre to kick it to. A hand pass on to Lee. Lee streaming down the centre. Looks for Jess. It's over Jess's head. As rolling towards goal. Coming through then, however, is Tim Darcy. And Darcy clears pretty easily. Hand pass back to the centre. Geelong running the ball out of their back line with great consistency and great confidence. Their back line's playing very well. They've got uh, a lot of the Richmond forwards covered. Couches kick in towards goal. It'll bounce through. Another long goal bouncing through for the, the Cats. They move on to 11-6-72, Richmond 5-6-36. Three go oh, two goals to Paul Couch. Those Great. goal kickers so far. Ablett's kicked three. Couch, Turner and Morgan two apiece. Great goal by Couch. Actually, there's a few left footers in this Geelong side, Stephen. Couch from inside the centre square here. His left footer bounces through for Geelong's 11th goal. Also notice that... Um Mark Hughes is not wearing his yellow boots today. No, that they're a very, very pretty pair of boots, those he normally wears. But Mark Lee has got them on. Ball down in the centre of the ground. Geelong players will get it out again through Bright. I can't talk, I've got a pair myself. <laughs> but we'd expect you to have a pair, mate. <laughs> and it's Yates who takes the mark right on the line. Now, Couch kick one from 10 yards further than this. And Ablett from about the same distance. Yates looking for Ablett, the ball punched down. Here's the chance for Morgan. Gets the hand pass to Turner, fumbles. Turner follows on. He says, I'm skipper, I'll have the kick. Lines up from 50. The kick floating over the boundary line, and there'll be a Tiger free kick. There's um, a tendency these days in uh, a lot of the, the teams is to run around the back of players and accept the handball. And Geelong are doing that quite well. You throw in. Mossop against Lee. Lee with a thump down. Bit of fumbling. One grab though by the Tigers. It's Yates across to Couch. Couch lines up. The kick just off line. Been a dangerous player today, Paul Couch. We wait now while Jeff Hogg kicks in. Thirty-seven points the difference, favouring Geelong. Mark Yates coming into his own in the second quarter. He's starting to lift now, Yates. It's a tough player too. Well, this is where Ablett kicked the goal from just before. But Yates has decided to go for the pass. He'll be looking for Mossop in the front position. Mossop has the ball knocked away from him. Morgan comes in, however. Lines up, swings it over his shoulder. Kick. Just off line, and Morgan doesn't kick his third goal. Just noticed then, Stephen, that uh, Mossop went up and there was four Geelong crummers about, you know, right at the base of his feet, only 35 yards out from goal. Beautiful mark to Ablett. Up and over, that's the mark of the day. And he plays on straight away. Straight across to Michael Lennigan. Lennigan's kick is offline. Great mark by Gary Ablett. Probably should have a shot himself. Went up backwards, took the mark, and dispatched the handball almost all in one movement. Burton kicks in, looking for Lee. He's up against uh, Burke. They're backing up ever so well, the Cats. It's Bruns who gets boot to ball very quickly. And the Geelong forward line is just too strong, too mobile. And we'll see Barry Stoneham from the 50 metre line. Not a good looking kick. It's swinging around. Mossop in the front position, or is it uh, Mossop? It is. Thumps his hand to his fist. Wasted opportunity. Geelong, 11 goals, 10. They have kicked six goals, six this term, and they're leading by 40 points. Paul Couch at the back of the pack, and Nears there should kick it off the ground, finding it hard to keep his footing. There'll be a bounce. 23 and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. Nothing seems to be coming off for the Tigers at the moment. They're trying to run. They're trying to uh, use their hands. 
Just got to keep persisting. Lee works his way around in the front position, comes out with the ball. Here's Morris Rioli's been very quiet this corner quarter. Palm. High. Looking for Poole in the front position. Has it taken away from him? There'll be a mark though. And it will go to Richmond's Trevor Poole. Might have been a fairly contentious mark. But he held his ground and was charged from the front. The Tigers need this. Do they ever? Trevor Poole comes through. He's kicked one, hits the post. Shocker. Terry Bright to put the ball back into play. Can't say much, many words to that. No, I think we'll just leave it at that. Damien Burke, ball down. Nice and sunny here at the MCG. Mark taken then by Michael Cole, perhaps a lucky one, but he's more than content to take it. Has the full 25 uh, metres, looking for Ablett. Morgan with a hand pass out. Here's the chance for Ablett, no pressure on him. Lines up, slams it through, and that's his fourth goal for the quarter. And Geelong, 12-10, 82, giving Richmond a lesson here. Richmond 5-7, 37, and the margin is 45 points. Geelong, seven goals for the quarter, and the mercurial, the brilliant Gary Ablett, has kicked four of them. Instead of being only five goals, the difference it is seven in a matter of a minute. Rioli, I think, off the ground for the Tigers. 24-year-old Gary Ablett putting through his fourth goal for the quarter. And Geelong still full of, full of running. Taken away then by Lee. Bit more aggression shown by the Tigers. Egan all by himself. He's got a paddock out there to run. If he can pick the bouncing ball up. Swings it over his shoulder. Jimmy Jess in position. The hand pass back. He couldn't get round in time. Tigers making a mess of things up forward. And the ball back to Darren Morgan, who's played a terrific game. Lots of the Geelong players have. Looks for Bruns. Bruns steadies. The chip pass over to David O'Keefe. O'Keefe playing game number 50. Follow the bouncing ball there if you dare. Eustace looks for Palm. Ball bites. And it'll be free kick to Palm. And pass over to Eustace. The umpire brings it back. Certainly a player with plenty of bite when he wants to be David Palm. Yes, Stephen. The umpire has blown the whistle. It'll be a Geelong free kick. Good player, Palm. He always plays it hard. Always looks, tries to look for someone. Bruns with the ball now at the 27 minute mark of the second quarter. Francis can't quite take the mark. Cats away and running. Here's the chance for Bright. Akers in front of him. He'll look for the pass. He'll look for Ablett. Ablett will fly. Tries for the screamer. Follows up. What football. Lines up from 45 metres out. Swings it round. It'll be offline. Gosh, what a player. Went up and over. Recovered the ball. And... Uh, had a shot for goal. He's kicked 4 3. And Geelong at 12 11. Geelong kicking 7 7 for the quarter. Well played, John Matten. Tigers away through Ryan, or Hogg, I should say, to Lee, to Anir. Anir goes long. There's no one in the square. Will it bounce? It will. Goal to Johnny Anir. Good play by Jim Jess. Cleared the forward line right out. And Anir kicks his first. Richmond move on to six goals, seven. They're trailing by a touch over six goals at the 28-minute mark. The ball was forced out here on the half-back flank, and John Manton brought it back into the corridor, which allowed Johnny Anir to run through Mark Lee, accept the handball, and kick a long goal. Michael Roach down there. I suppose at full forward or in the forward pocket. Two-pronged attack last week, or last time I saw them. Jess 
and Roach were playing in the back line against the Sydney Swans. Now they're next to each other on the forward line, perhaps you might say where they belong. Cats out of the centre. And Richmond's Ryan right, right up to it. Long kick. Good grab out there. Geary. Started well. He'll look for Jess or Roach. He'll go for Roach on this occasion. Ball punched over the boundary line by Neville Bruns, the Geelong vice-captain. So as we approach the 30-minute mark in the second quarter, it's a 40-point lead to the Cats. Richmond right. have got a very congested forward line at the moment compared to Geelong's. Egan jumps into it. Can't do much about it. Ball kicked off the ground. Over the boundary line on the full. There'll be a free kick to the Tigers. One for the high flyers. Jess from behind can't take it. He was blocked. And it'll be Damien Burke. He's not very happy about it either, Jimmy. The hand pass is a good one. Over to Morgan, who's been one of the best players on the ground. Over to Bruns. Cats off and running. Manton in there. And he'll just watch that one sail through. Be thrown in. Half forward flank for the Cats. Pro football's match of the day here at the MCG. Bright and sunny day fairly gloomy end of the season for Richmond marked it to Tigers play on's going that's uh, disastrous at the moment Geary gets it out to Anir Anir with his second a chance to kick his second in as many minutes he lines up Jimmy Jess Shepherds it through be a goal to Johnny Anir good play by Anir Put some respectability onto the scoreboard, and that's Richmond's seventh. They're fourth for the quarter. And as you said, Robbo, the difference between the two sides this quarter has certainly been Gary Ablett, who has kicked four goals himself. No doubt about that. Geary got the hand pass out to Anir. Anir ran his full distance, dropped it onto the left boot. He's usually a pretty true kick, and he put it through for his second. 31 minutes second quarter it's been a long quarter and plenty of action Mark Lee puts the uh, the knee up twice in a row the umpire let it go the first time but uh, he's penalized this time and there'll be a, a penalty Damien Burke with a long kick he's down looking for Ablett again the bounce will elude him the hand pass back Lee with a chance to uh, redeem himself for that ruck infringement goes out wide center wing position I think Geary it is in the front position as the siren sounds for half time and the pro football scoreboard shows Geelong 12-11, 83, leading Richmond by 34 points. Richmond 7-7. I'm Stephen Phillips. I'll be back with Michael Roberts for the second half in just a moment. You want to be a real footballer? I've been a real footballer. You've got to look like a real footballer. You've got to go for the mark. VFL Mark, go for the mark. Go, go for the mark. mark. Go. go for the VFL Mark at leading stores. Real footy gear, real footy accessories, real footy supporters gear too, in all club colours and badges. Go for the mark. Go for the mark. Go for the mark. Go for the, mark. Go for the VFL Mark at leading stores. Second half getting underway here in Pro Football's match of the day. Geelong and Richmond at the MCG. And that margin of 34 points, heavy black clouds over the ground at the moment. Cats kick off into attack. Richmond showing a bit more desperation. Johnny Manton gets the ball to his boot. But the Cats, they're looking very, very sharp indeed. They're looking for Ablett, kicks the ball off the ground. Turner, one bounce and over the line for a throw in on the 50 metre line. With me, uh, special comments today, former St Kilda and Richmond player, Michael Roberts. And Michael, Tigers look as though they're right down in confidence. Yeah, they are, and I, I would well imagine that uh, Tony Jules had a, a fair say to them at half time. Well, Egan's got the crumbs there, tapped down from Jess. Egan lines up, beautiful kick for goal. Just the goal the Tigers needed. They started the second quarter like this. And Philip Egan back in the side, looking good. 
puts through the Tigers' eight. All year, Tony's been stressing to uh, to crumb, especially at centre-half forward and around that forward line area. Philip Egan did that really well on the left foot and just kicked a magnificent goal. The breeze, gusty, favouring the Cats. And that margin now is uh, 28 points. The umpires today, Sheehan and Saville. It's Lee against Burke in the ruck. Lee uses his body, then the ball beats both ruckmen. There'll be a bounce again. We'll have a good close look at Mark Lee's rucking technique against the youngster from Geelong. But uh, he's coming in straight at him too. When a stuff used the body, then tried to thump him out of the way. It's Waitman. Free kick, it'll go to the flea. A long hand pass, Richmond away and running a couple of quick goals here, it'd be handy. Francis over to a near, running onto that practice wicket area where things are heavy. Can't bring it round any further, it's out on the full. Once you get onto the practice wicket area over there on the half forward flank, it looks nice and heavy. It is pretty heavy out there, Stephen, and that wind is blowing fair in their faces over in that dead pocket of the MCG. Catch trying to get it out, ball smothered, and there'll be another bounce. 50 metres out from the Tigers' goal. They've started the quarter well. I think um, Mark Lee's really trying to lift his game. He's uh, being aggressive, starting to run, even running past players, even doing a lot of roving work himself, really working hard to try and lift the uh, Tigers being captain. Awkward-looking bounce. Egan comes in. There'll be a free kick. Be a Geelong free kick. Waiting for Wally Eustace to send the ball back. That wind uh, blowing straight to Manton. Manton with a hand pass over to Burton. He's off and running. Looking for Roach. Ball on the ground. Bright coming through. One against three. Falls over the ball. Gets it out cleverly to Bruns. Bruns' kick's not a good one. Geary. Hand pass is a shocker. Intercepted by Geelong. Geelong off and running. And uh, bad play by Richmond. David O'Keefe onto the right foot. Swings it into centre half forward. Up and over is Michael Turner, and the Geelong skipper takes a nice mark. He'll look for Ablett, makes room for himself. Beautiful pass by Turner, and Gary Ablett, 35 to 40 metres out from goal. Angle is nothing, and he's kicked four. You can see that um, just one skill error will just totally uh, be a bad thing for the, uh, the Richmond side here because it's ended up with Gary Ablett instead of being down an out forward line. It's been forced straight down to Geelong. Ablett kicks his fifth. Beautiful pass by Mick Turner. Gary Ablett has kicked five goals, three. And Geelong now move on to 13 goals, 11, 89. Richmond, 8-7, 55. That lead again is 34 points. Gary Ablett has kicked exactly 33 of them. Four and a half minutes into the third quarter. And if you can't cut Gary Ablett out of the play, then you're in big trouble. Just noticed the uh, Richmond runner come out to Richard Geary about that handball, Stephen. Yes, the Richmond runner, the rather portly, uh, the grub, I think they call him. That's his name, yes. Peter Grant. Lee tries to kick it off the ground. He misses. O'Keefe comes through. Turner will be in there too. Geelong players everywhere. Michael Turner weaves, gets round onto his left foot. Good interception there. The umpire's in the way. Chance now for Richmond to clear. But good tackling. Bustling play. Rain beginning to fall here at the MCG as Johnny Anir bursts out of the centre. Been one of their better players. Finds Jimmy Jess. The hand passes on to Lee. Lee from 50 metres out. Scoops the ball up. Won't get it round far enough. And it's through for a behind. Obviously, uh, Tony Jules instructed to the Richmond team to really start running. And they're really starting to run from the back line all the way through to the forward line. And that margin of 33 points will be quite uh, handy as the ball becomes slippery. The rain heavier here at the MCG. Yes, Geelong have got a real advantage now. If it starts to team rain, and with that uh, score, it's going to be fa fairly hard to peg them back. Looking to the weather quarter, uh, there is blue sky over there, but I think this... Uh, this cool, damp weather could be with us for 10 or 15 minutes. Burke takes the ball out of midair. Palm can't pick it up. Lennigan in there too. Is holding the man decision. It'll go against Geary. Here, a Geelong free kick. To the centre of the ground. Terry Bright. Right in line for votes. 
He won't get them that time. Tigers away, looking for Egan. Scoops the ball up beautifully, one grab. Wonder why Rioli isn't on the ground. Back to Egan on the left foot. He's 50 metres out. He'll go for Roach. Roach has got two on him. And it's through for a behind. I noticed at uh, half-time when the players were walking off, Stephen, that uh, Morrissey was limping. Well, he looked good. He looked as fresh as I've seen him since the state game early on. And uh, he's, he went off, uh, I'd say, early in the second quarter. It's Darcy coming out of defence. Hand pass over to Cole. Cole always got plenty of toe. Straight down the wing. Johnny Manton comes through. Wheels around on the left. It's a high torpedo. All Geelong down there. Can't hold the mark. Cats again through Burke, following up his Eustace. Bruns in there with a hand pass out. Darcy, back to Fitzgerald. Been quite a handy player for the Cats today. He goes around the wing. Morgan, been a terrific player. He's kicked a couple of goals. He's got all the pace. He's had a look for Ablett. Or oh, Ablett can't quite grab it. He's held. Tigers making a mess of things down there. They get it out to Manton. Burton, free kick. Johnny Manton, back to Burton. Burton's collared. The umpire says, no, we're not ready yet. <laughs> very lucky there, Stephen. He was indeed. Ablett moved very quickly off Manton's mark to do the tackling. Johnny Manton, not a bad kick of a football, and uh, that's a good-looking kick. It falls short, however, and it's marked on the chest of Tim Darcy. Back to Bruns. That wind tends to gust around in the MCG because of the stands tends to get the ball, get hold of the ball that moves all over the place wait for the throw in half forward flank for the Cats and they're leading by 32 points at the 8 minute mark of the third quarter the game means nothing as far as the final 5 is concerned but if Geelong can win they'll go up the ladder 2 notches big fly there, the umpires paid the mark to Ablett Ablett up and over marked it on his chest and he has kicked five goals he's pretty hard to stop when he starts jumping about like this isn't he he's pretty hard to stop when he <laughs> when he does anything Gary Ablett comes in on the slightest of angles the goal umpire doesn't move goal number six to Gary Ablett and Geelong move further ahead 38 points ahead at the nine minute mark. Geelong 14 11 95, Richmond 8 9 57 on the Pro Football scoreboard. Hope you're enjoying this telecast wherever you're watching your Pro Footy tape right around Australia. Ablett six goals, three, four in the second quarter, two already in the third quarter. Lee jumps into his opponent. It's Landy who comes out of the centre. Jess caught behind then. Courageous play by Waitman. And uh, Geelong player just kicks for the boundary line. But the kick isn't far enough. Scoop back into play then. Bright comes out with it. Christensen, time to steady. Stone him in there. Yates almost has his head ripped off. Geelong away and running, looking for Ablett again. Boundary line will beat him. It took uh, Geelong a little bit to get going after half time, but they're starting to get their running going now with Morgan. Players like Morgan and Bruns looking for Ablett down there in the forward line. And only at the 10 minute mark of the third quarter, Ablett's got six. Poor Jeff Hogg. Right on the 50 metre line, it's Lee against Mossop, two old campaigners. The hand pass out that time by Ryan's a good one, finds a near. Looks for Francis. Good hands, Francis. Swings the ball around, looking for Jess. Plenty of body work there. Finally, it's knocked out by Darcy. Cats back into attack. Two Richmond players in. Palmer is who comes out with the, the mark. The ball will go out wide. Looks like Smith out there. Smith in an ear. The pass. A good one for the Tigers. And it finds Poole. High kick, looking for Roach. Roach tries for the one-hander. He's trying to fend his opponent off at the same time. Geelong looking pretty cool down there. They've got plenty of leeway. They lead by over six goals. 
They, tend to, they run it out of their back line quite easily, don't they? Not a lot of pressure either from the Richmond forwards. Turner takes the mark on the half-back flank and centres it. The grab in front. Here go the Cats again out wide. They seem to have players by themselves all over the place. Ablett all by himself, got the break. Follows up well, he's being held, pushed out of the way. The umpire says play on, there'll be a bounce. Gary Ablett just uh, mentioning to the umpire that the ball was some five or six yards away when he was grabbed. He's got that enormous acceleration and that, that quick burst over two or three metres, Ablett, which uh, gives him the break all the time. He can also leap off about two or three steps too. Smith spins it round. The bounce beats a couple of players. A bit of pushing and shoving in there. And it looks like David Palm. Palm with the free kick. Looking for the hand pass, looking for the lead, in fact. He finds Mark Lee, skipper. The hand pass is on to Manton. Manton's kick, a wobbly old thing. Jimmy Jess down there. Poole, he runs around. He's 50 metres out on the left foot. Goes for the long hand pass. That hand pass messed up again. Poole again. Has another go on the left foot. Lines up for goal. That's a better looking kick, but just right through the middle. Great play by Trevor Poole. He's had to, had to uh, handball the ball off because he's being tackled. Gave it to young Paul, Paul Morrish. Got it back and uh, with his left foot kicked a nice goal. When the goal umpire ran across, then I thought he might have been just off line, but he's put through Richmond's ninth. The scoreboard here at the MCG. Geelong, 14-11, 95, a Richmond, 9-9-63. Trevor Poole has kicked two. Missed one shocker that hit the post in the second quarter. Lee coming in on a different angle against Burke. One too many in the square. The free kick will go to Geelong. Burke plays on straight away. Turner, how easy is that? That's the... Uh three card trick I think. Yes just playing in front that is the big thing Stephen just uh, their forwards seem to be in front all the time and it's very hard for a back man to get round a forward who's in front all the time. Well Michael Turner's 40 metres out from goal he's kicked 2-2 two -two. the drop punt just a little off centre but good enough for a goal Geelong answer Geelong 15-11 101 lead Richmond 9-9-63 by 38 points at the 13 minute mark of the third quarter. It is a sin in uh, league football to give away an easy free kick in the centre bounce because you really have to try hard and strive to get it out of the centre and to get it out like that, like Geelong did with that ease and then to give it to Turner who was in front is a pretty poor football by Richmond. Lee changing his tactics a bit, opened it up a bit for uh, Burke on that occasion. Here's a chance now for Richmond through Jess, the ball bounces, beats him. It's Christensen who comes out with it. He will run straight down the middle of the ground and he'll look for Turner again, or Yates. Ball tapped down then. Landy, former Geelong player himself. Geary can't do much about it. All Geelong again. Good backup then by the Tigers. Geelong looking very, very confident. They go downfield looking for and finding Yates. They're starting to get a, a few winners, Geelong now, through their key position players, and uh, they're really looking forward to forward. Well, Yates, Yates got the ball over to centre-half forward and uh, Landy will run it out towards the wing position. Out there falling over is Morrish, having all sorts of trouble. Not strong enough on that occasion. He's pushed out of the way by Lennigan. Lennigan gets it across to Couch, who was a great player in the first half. Couch's kick, he's looking for Ablett or Mossop. Mossop has the ball punched away from him. Tigers away and running. Johnny Manton in the front position. Shows a burst of speed as he swings the ball back looking for Jim Jess. And uh, Jess beaten for the ball on that occasion. O'Keefe comes out, sends it straight into centre-half forward. Do you mind? All by himself. The danger man, Gary Ablett. And Ablett marks as easy as you like on the chest. And he will have a go for goal number seven. I don't know who was supposed to be on uh, Gary Ablett at that stage. Great play by Geelong. Paul Couch has had a terrific game. Uh, this man Gary Ablett going for goal number seven goal umpire fades across a little bit looks pretty good goal number seven to Gary Ablett and Geelong streeting Richmond here at the MCG in the last match of the year Geelong 16-11 107 the poor old Tigers 9-9-63 16 minutes and 10 seconds gone in the third quarter they've taken uh, 
Young Hog off Fablet and put John Manton onto him. The sun's just starting to come out here at the MCG now, but that wind's still favouring that punt road end. Down again, Lee against Burke. Burke gets the tap again, it's a beauty. Bruns isn't able to grab it. Richmond punched the ball forward. They've got to be more aggressive. Free kick. The umpire pulls the ball back. It will go to Richmond to be taken by Dale Waitman. The flea had a good season. Bit of confusion there. A bit of foxing. Richard Gere's just come off the ground and Young Bow's gone on. Beautiful pass, absolutely copybook. From Waitman to Lee, back to Waitman to Jess. Hot potato, Jimmy Jess gets rid of it nice and quickly. He said, I don't want this one to Roach. Roach with a hand pass, one too many. Bright gets the ball away towards the safety of the boundary line. First there should be uh, Michael Lennigan. Gets the long hand pass over to Yates. Yates fumbles. Hand pass back to Morris. Morris is in all sorts of strife. Geelong pounce again. It's Jess. Looks as though he's gone out of centre half back. Hand pass, uh, his pass to Bright. And a Geelong mark. Comedy of errors there, Stephen, by both indeed. sides. Just try to pick up where Jimmy Jess is going. Whether he's uh, just moving downfield from centre half forward. I think you'll find that he'll play at centre half forward. Looking for Ablett. Great grab. Play on, says the umpire. The crowd going mad. They thought the Geelong star had held it long enough. Tigers out of the centre. Looking for Jess. He's fighting off two players. But they do it ever so easily, the Cats. And it will be Terry Bright who brings the ball back. To Mossop. He's under all sorts of pressure there. The umpire finds a free kick and it will go to John Mossop of Geelong. A desperate, lot more desperation by Geelong. is tending to get in front, and they really want that football more than Richmond. Ablett can't quite get in a position, but he's pushed a Richmond player over down there. Can't quite see who it is. He's on his hands and knees. Young Craig Smith. Smith will take the free kick. 107 plays 63 at the 19-minute mark of the third quarter. Ooh, that one just stayed in, and Graham Landy, one of the most prolific markers of the football in the VFL. Easy mark taken out there by the Cats. They're away and running quick again. quick hands, Steve. To Bruns. Bruns lines up. Ablett in the back position. He's pushed in the chest, and the ball through for a behind. 108 plays 63, 45 points the difference with about uh, 40 minutes of this match remaining. A lot of pressure on the Richmond back line. The ball's been down there for most of the quarter. Richmond have only had it in their forward line for the first five minutes. They've had four goals kicked against them and kicked two themselves, the Tigers. And the Cats aren't finished yet. Waiting for Cole. He'll swing it round. Oh, mess down there. It's Mossop. Taps it on. Turner comes out with it. The hand pass back. Turner again. Scramble of players. The umpire says, play on. Here's a chance for the Tigers through Francis. Has a good run. Jackie Egan there. In the front position. Picks it up. He's on his left foot. 35, 25 metres out from goal. Drives it home for his second. Egan takes the Tigers onto 10 goals, 9, 69. Geelong, 16, 12. 108 and the Tigers look ever so much better with an open forward line and a few players running down the ground. They do Stephen and a um, bit of a cardinal sin there by Cole he, he forced himself way up into Geelong's forward line, the ball was relayed down into Richmond's forward line and Jackie Egan was there all by himself and kicked an easy goal Lee coming in uh, on a slightly different tack against Burke in this quarter and uh, Burke has been getting the majority of the tap outs. An awful bounce, Couch will be underneath it. Ball tapped down again, Turner will try and tap it on. Richmond with the ball out of the centre again. 
and Nair trying to jump at it. He's caught by Burke all Geelong now. And with it is Lennigan. Lennigan goes for the short pass. It's intercepted. Eustace swings it around on his right foot. Poole there. Great looking player. Here's the chance for Dale Waitman. Dummies the handball on his left foot. Lines up. Sends it goalward. Another one of the Tigers. Can they get back? You just see the skill of Dale Waitman. Just draw that player thinking that he was going to handball, just went onto his left foot and steered it straight through. Geelong, 16-12, 108. The Tigers fighting back. They're 11-9-75. Dale Waitman has kicked two goals. And the margin, 33 points. I like the mark of uh, Trevor Poole. He reminds me so much of Royce Hart, the way he comes in and takes the marks from the side. And the left foot, of course, uh, just adds to it. Yes, uh, Poole, always a one-grab man too, which is a big thing. 108 plays 75. We've got about seven or eight minutes left in this third quarter. And then Richmond come home with a breeze. Lee gets the tap out. Poole overruns the ball, but the Tigers are running through Eustace. Scrambly footy there. Waitman comes out with it. Kicks it high. He's looking for Jess. Jess has got the sit. Can't take the mark, and the ball trickles through for a behind. We needed that. Jimmy Jess only had to take that, and uh, we've got a few legs in the, the Richmond side now. At the 22 minute mark and uh, if we can get a couple more goals it'll be an interesting last quarter Stephen. Four goals apiece this quarter to Geelong and to Richmond. Waitman uses his body well. Poole comes out with it. The hand pass is on. The kick isn't a good one by Poole. He had no one to kick to and it's Bruns who takes the mark. Geelong out of the back line now. Cole on the left foot. One bounce and over. Good piece of umpiring by uh, our boundary runner down here because I think the ball bounced about an inch or two inside the line Lee Mark Lee Damian Burke Lee gets a tap down Landy got terrific hands he's looking for pool again he's pushing the back takes the one hand a mark of the day for uh, for pool looking for Roach. Roach caught out of position. The kick, not a good one. And Geelong clear through Bright. When Richmond have got an open forward line, we tend to bring the ball in a lot better. Cats running it around the boundary. An important couple of moments for Richmond. They must desperately try and hold Geelong out for these last few minutes of the quarter. Waitman, he's been everywhere. He's sparked Richmond. It's Ryan that gets the hand pass going. Back into the centre of the ground, coming through his pool. Can't take the mark, but he'll follow up well. He'll double back onto his left, or hand pass to Ryan. Ryan makes a mess of it. And there'll be a bounce. Only one skill, er skill error again, Stephen, and uh, just brings the whole flow of the game to, to a halt. Richmond are off and running then. You take your eye off the ball it went to the ground and now we've got a ball up on uh, Rich on Geelong's half forward line could well have been a free to uh, Mark Lee in fact it is oh the a little bit of a skill error there too as uh, Lee telegraphed the hand pass to Waitman Waitman with great agility gets out of it gets it over to a near Francis Francis will kick it long. There's no one home. Michael Roach should get there. No, not in time. The hand pass back. There's plenty of fumbling going on. Plenty of pressure being applied at the moment. And the cat's clear. Towards the boundary line. O'Keefe. Hand pass to Bright. Bright battles to keep it in play. Good play, Terry Bright. Long hand pass. They're looking good, the Cats, when they run. But Richmond are showing more desperation late in the third quarter. Burton accepts the hand pass from Waitman. Has a good run right down the middle of the ground. He's looking for Poole. Poole can't take the mark, but he uses his body well. He'll back up through his Egan. Goes for the hand pass. Landy on the left. Looks for Jess or Anir and finds John Anir a matter of 40 metres out, directly in front. I don't know whether that kick was in, uh, intended for John Anir, but it got there. Well, John Anir has kicked two goals. 
the kick won't make the distance. Roach in the front position. He's bustled out of the way. Eustace is there. Tries to snap it. Jess comes in. Can't grab it. The umpire will come in and bounce. 26 and a half minutes gone in the third quarter. Richmond making some sort of a revival. They've kicked a couple of goals late in the term. Another one now might just give them some sniff of a chance. Thump out. Geelong in the front position through Couch. Ball bounces awkwardly. Jess comes through. Can't hold it. It's Cole coming out. Michael Cole. Forwards uh, for Richmond have got to work a lot harder to keep the ball in their forward line so we can score. This is Barry Stoneham now and a timely mark. His kick looking for Turner. Underneath the ball, he's nudged out of the way. Smith can't keep it in play and we'll have a throw in. Half back flank for Richmond, half forward for the uh, Geelong side. Bright sunshine, a crowd of about uh, 15,000 I suppose, enjoying a pretty torrid battle between two teams destined to finish well down the ladder. Bruns's kick looking for Ablett, Ablett can't mark it. John Manton hasn't done a bad job since he's been switched onto the uh, Cats match winner. Wait now for Burton to put the ball back into play. 109 plays 76. Beautiful torpedo, all of 55 to 60 metres, and the mark taken at the back by, uh, it looks like, Martin Christensen. Christensen's kick. Ball to the ground, Turner can't take it. Great tackle there, the umpire says. No chance of getting rid of it. It was a great tackle. Full marks to Johnny Mossop then. Caught Burton. So I'm saying, Stephen, the Geelong players in the forward line tend to keep the ball up there until they score. Ball free. It's Lennigan who comes out with it. He's got time to swing around. He'll be looking for Ablett. And it's amazing how that ball finds him. And we'll have a throw in. The wind's pretty strong down there, Stephen. Mossop thumps it. Ablett, oh, has the snap. Richmond, good clever play. It's Craig Smith again. And uh, Landy could almost be paid that. In fact, he will be paid that. Tigers away. Landy, beautiful kick of the football. Looks for Poole. Can't find him. Egan's in there battling. They've missed him. Chance now. For, uh, I think that's uh, David Parr with John Anir. John Anir. They're hard to, they're hard to tell apart, as a matter of fact. Their numbers look very similar. Five and six. Jimmy Jess looks as though he's being held. The umpire says no. Darcy to clear for the Cats. Here's a chance for Morrish. The hand pass to Francis. The high flyers, but it'll be the man in front. And it's a good mark, a safe mark, taken by Craig Cleave. Brendan Bauer just making things just a touch un uncomfortable for Cleave. Gives away the 15-metre penalty. There's the siren for three-quarter time. And at the, uh, the interval, Geelong, 16-13, 109, lead Richmond 11-10, 76. We'll be back with the last quarter in just a moment. Last quarter getting underway here at the MCG. Richmond and Geelong, pro football's match of the day. And Geelong, 33 points ahead. As we see Burke contesting against Roach. Had a second look there, Michael Roach, and uh, lost his momentum. Richmond have got the early goals the last two quarters. They want them fairly early now, Stephen, because they're about five behind. Michael Roberts with me in the commentary position. The weather, well, it's been a bit patchy today. We've had some bright sunshine. And we've had some heavy rain and hail. But all day the wind has persisted. It's blown straight down the ground to the left of uh, your picture. And that's the way Richmond are kicking. The tap on thwarted then. Couch kicks it off the ground. He's out there looking for Bruns in the practice wicket area. Bruns swings it around. He's looking for Ablett over the back. Great mark, Gary Ablett. 
Just another one of uh, the mighty marks of this man, Ablett. He's kicked seven goals, three up and over the top. And no one, and I mean no one, can stop footballers when they're moving like that. Ablett lines up. Deserved better. Through for a behind. Geelong tend to uh, drop a couple of players out of the packs and they feed them out and but that's how they get their run on game going Burton will kick the ball in you're going looking for John Manton Manton all by himself just having a word or two to David O'Keefe celebrating game number 50 back to Burton Burton to Eustace hand pass back to Burton he's, he's kicked the ball in he's run all the way down the field and found the full forward full back to full forward Great play by Richmond then, used two players, Burton and Manton. And it's Jimmy Jess who's 45 metres out from goal. He's only kicked one, the ghost. Sides on the drop punt. It's a beautiful looking kick. It's going to fall short and the mark will be taken by Michael Schultz. If anything, I'm wondering if the wind hasn't swung around a little. So uh, do some magnificent kicking against that breeze. There's the mark taken out there by Damien Burke. Burke, half back. Ball holding up. Yes, I think that breeze is, is still favouring uh, Richmond this quarter. Bruns. Geelong still playing in front, Stephen. Francis, here's the chance, dummies the hand pass, kicks it high, one for the high flyers, Lee coming in, didn't uh, really make much of a run at that one Mark Lee, Egan swings it back towards goal, there's no one home for Richmond and it'll be Tim Darcy who clears, goes for the long hand pass and finds Fitzgerald, he's dispossessed pretty quickly, Morrish comes through, we do with a bit of confidence Morrish, Francis, the long hand pass to a near. He's pushed in the back. Jess comes out with the ball. Lines up from 35 metres out. He's offline, Jimmy Jess. And out of bounds on the full. Pretty disgusted with himself, Jimmy Jess, because he had a lot of time to straighten up there from only 35 yards out. The score here, Richmond 11, 10, 76. Geelong 16, 14, 110 at the four-minute mark. Waiting for the ball to come into play. Jimmy Jess would have that shot for goal at practice 50 times a night and put it through probably 48 times. Up all Geelong, Damian Burke. Good performance today. Bright, been another excellent uh, player for the Cats. Mark taken by Yates who came into his own after quarter time. His hand pass is a good one. He goes over the top to Michael Cole who's a runner, got plenty of pace. The kick's a woeful one. Burton's there. Burton goes for the tap on. Up to Cole to make amends now. Eustace. Wally sends it wide around the wing. Richmond beginning to look just that little bit better. Egan. Jess stands his ground. Poole comes round. He's on the right foot. Swings it in towards goal. Gosh, it's a good looking kick. No one's touched it. It's a goal to the Tigers. Great play by Trevor Poole and Richmond 12-10, 82, Geelong 16, 14, 110 and the Tigers gradually inching their way back into the game. They're just five goals down now with 25 minutes to play. The running players of Waitman, Anir and Eustace have just come into the game of late and uh, Johnny made great space out there and the ball was forced down to the forward line, a nice open forward line and we scored. Roach goes up. He's well and truly beaten by Burke on that occasion. Scrambly play in the centre. Geelong finally get it out. And a good mark taken at centre half back. Tigers away. Francis. Francis having a good long run. In fact, it's a beauty. And he finds Dale Waitman. A couple of hand pass opportunities on there. And Waitman well and truly collared. Francis again, he's all by himself, takes the mark. Can the Tigers get back? 
We only need a couple and uh, we'll have a real ball game on our hand because it's only the six minute mark of this last quarter. Peter Francis. Dale Waitman thinks all the time. He could have given out the handball, then decided to hold the ball back, allow Francis to go down that forward pocket, and he got the pass to him. Francis comes in. The kick is dead centre. Goal to the Tigers. Peter Francis kicks his second. Richmond move on to 13 goals, 10. 88. Geelong, 16, 14, 110. If the Tigers can score a couple more without Geelong uh, getting the ball down and scoring themselves, I think uh, we might be in for a really tight finish. 13,569 people here at the MCG. Let's hope they're treated to a thrilling finish. Big crowd, Stephen. Uh, it's been a poor crowd, really, but the weather was bad at the time when most people are leaving home. It's Anir who sends the ball forward. In front... Jackie Egan. Tigers looking better. Their forward line's beginning to operate as it should. Egan's kick. He's down looking for Jimmy Jess. Jess has the ball tapped away. Here comes Waitman. Sends it through. Goal to the Tigers. It's the post, is it? Ah, uh, anti-climax. Dale having a, a bit of a say to the goal umpire there. Plenty of people having a say to the goal umpire. And Bright just saying to cool it. Dar Waitman's a very honest player. I think he's gone to the goal on pace saying that was a goal. I don't think they hit the post, Stephen. Well, that's the way it will go down in history. Nothing you can say will change it. 89 plays 110. They've had some bad misses today, the Tigers, and if indeed that hit the post, as the umpire said, that will go down as another one. But two bad posters from point-blank range. That's a good tackle. And the umpire says it's too good, in fact. One of the anomalies of our game. Strange rule, that. One of the few sports where you do something perfectly and uh, you get nothing for it. Roach against Burke. Roach in the front position. And Nia sends it forward. Lee there, trying for the punch. Egan will tackle, a great tackle. Another good tackle. The umpire says too high. Two Geelong players down. The result of some very fierce tackling by the Tigers, who I think can sense that uh, they have half a chance. I can't believe some of these umpires sometimes. Egan's down and injured, which is unfortunate behind play. And the ball back on the wing. It's Graham Landy. Bit more out of confidence with the Richmond side at the moment. There is Stephen. indeed. Landy comes in. Uh, I should say Egan. Can't do much about it. Here's a chance for Poole. Dives on the ball. They all dive on top of Trevor Poole. And we'll have a bounce at centre half forward. That unfortunate miss by Dale and uh, some good tackling there could have uh, brought the score even a bit closer. tap down, it's Bright who will come out with it absolutely wonderful game in defence today for the Cats used his brain they're out and running again Geelong and the opportunity might have just uh, left Richmond for just one second or two Craig Smith had a tough job today on Michael Turner, Turner has kicked three goals Graham Landy Young Paul Morris. Paul Morris. Morris has a good bounce. The pass out looking for Egan. Or Waitman. Another free kick going against the Tigers. And uh, I think that one was fairly obvious. And we're waiting now for Tim Darcy to settle things down. Ten minutes gone in the last quarter. Richmond uh, three goals down. A little bit of panic set into the uh, Geelong side who were cruising at the start of this last quarter at the 10 minute mark. It's 13, 11, 89 to Geelong 16, 14, 110. Man in front will get the mark. It's Yates, gets it straight across to Michael Cole. Cole will use his pace. It's a high kick looking for Ablett. Ablett goes for the ride. Can't quite juggle the ball. 
and it'll be Burton who takes the ball out of the back line. He's looking for Waitman. Waitman spills it. Can't believe it. Goes for the tackle. Follows up. He's grabbed by the by the uh, leg. The umpire is standing right in front of him and doesn't see it. Morgan, the long hand pass out wide to O'Keefe. O'Keefe's pass drops short. It could have been in the back. Palm. And the ball goes over the line with the two number 31s, David O'Keefe of Geelong, Brendan Bauer of Richmond, and we'll have a throw in. Flea Waitman still having a go at the umpire. Small crowd here at the MCG, but uh, events of the last 10 minutes have certainly brought them to life. Richmond have kicked a couple of goals. Geelong haven't kicked a goal in this last quarter so far. And Richmond coming home with a breeze. Bad fumble then. And uh, the Richmond run is halted. There must be soap on that ball. Jeff Hogg had a couple of days he'd prefer to forget this year. The hand pass out. Morrish. Craig Smith. And it'll be Wally Eustace. There should be some form of penalty here, 15 metres. Wally Eustace is off like a flash. Goes for the pass. It's a good looking pass too. And finds Trevor Poole. And a 15 metre penalty. Brings it up to the 50 metre line, Stephen. With no one on just the having mark. a good run. Lines up. It's a good looking kick. Jess underneath it. And it's through for a behind. He's got plenty of pace, Poole, and he's a lovely kick on the run. 90 plays 110. 20 points the difference. Bit of panic into the Geelong side now. Burke clears. Kick straight up in the air, really. And here go the Cats. It'll be O'Keefe with a long handball to the racehorse Turner. Has the old galloper got any sprint left in him? Runs into goal, he's 35 metres out. It's a captain's goal, it's a steadying goal. And Geelong kicked their first for the quarter. Michael Turner kicks his fourth. And Geelong steady to 17, 14, 116. Richmond 13, 12, 90 at the 13 minute mark of the last quarter. Just what the Cats needed. Yeah, that was Michael Turner's fourth goal for the day. And uh, it looked as though Richmond were just getting on top. Geelong have been able to score that goal. And um, at the 13-minute mark, they find themselves about four goals in front. 48 goals for the season to Michael Turner. And Geelong's other big goal kicker, of course, Gary Ablett, has kicked 64 in 15 games, we might point out. It's not over yet, though, Stephen. Michael Roberts, the, uh, the commentator. I think they've got to make uh, a major inroad. The wasted opportunities will certainly uh, cost them dearly, the Tigers. Smith has the bounce. He's off. Maybe the pace of the young Tigers might uh, bring about some sort of a, uh, a turnabout in the last moments. The hand pass from Geary back to Waitman. There's a loose man on here, Waitman. Dummies, lines up, sees Jess. Jess, one metre out from goal. And you just wonder whether it wouldn't have been easier to keep running. I don't know. In those situations, it's better to be uh, better to be safe than sure. Safe than sorry. The umpire is going to pull him right round on the angle. I don't think Jimmy Jess will miss this. There's the goal. Jess's second. The answer to the Turner goal. Richmond 13-12-90. They're still in it. Geelong 17-14. 116. In fact, uh, the scoreboard has now changed. It's 116 plays 96. Like the way Waitman just dummied. Saw Jess all by himself in the goal square. And just dropped the pass in. 31-year-old Jimmy Jess. And I bet all the people up in Avoca would be delighting in his performances since he made that uh, comeback last year. Eustace, offline, not a good kick. And the ball goes straight to Craig Cleave. Lennigan. Just at this point, Stephen, we made uh, tribute to Barry Rowlings. I also want to mention that uh, Craig Stewart obviously played his last game today too, so he's been around the football world for a long time. Old Snaggles. Yeah, Snaggles. Left a trail of broken hearts wherever he's been. 
pass out to Morgan. Turner does well to trap the ball. He's on the left foot, lines up. He's kicked four. It's a good-looking kick. Another goal to Michael Turner. That's his fifth. And Geelong, 18-14, 122. Richmond, 14-12, 96. And uh, two good captain's goals by Michael Turner. They're the only two of the quarter. And it'd be nice for Mickey Turner if he can get that one more he needs to bring up his 50 for the season. Yes, they've had a, um, a really good two-prong attack down there with Gary Ablett and Michael Turner today. What Ablett's got seven and Turner's got five. Francis kicks it high. He's looking for Egan. Poole's in there trying to do his best, but it's Geelong out with the ball to Turner again. Turner uses his pace and his experience. He gets away, he's dragged to the ground. That was a good tackle by, uh, by Smith, and Smith will take the free kick between halfback and centre wing position. Waitman gets the ball over to, to Michael Roach. Roach up forward looking for Morrish, a young player with potential. Experience has been hard uh, today. Geary is going to bounce. It's an awkward one. Here's a chance for Poole. He swings it round. It'll swing round for a goal or will it? Through for a behind only. Great attempt there by Trevor Poole. 97 plays 122. The margin still uh, just over four goals. And a big fly out there by Graham Landy. About 12 minutes left in this match. Four goals needed by the Tigers. High flyers. Here's the chance now for Anir if he can grab it. Slides over. Backs up well. Keeps the ball in play. It's Eustace. Kicks it back over his shoulder. Geary's under it. Can't mark it. The ball towards the, uh, the boundary line. Snapped out. And very cool play by Geelong. It will be cleared by Neville Bruns. And he finds John Fitzgerald. Over the top to Bright. Bright uses his experience. Kicks had, for touch. Had nowhere to go there because um, he was looking fair in the face of uh, Chris Burton and just went for the boundary line. Michael Roach in the front position. Damien Burke, though, has won most of the knockouts today. He wins again. Lovely smother then by Morgan. Out of bounds on the full. And uh, luck's a fortune. You don't see John Mossop uh, doing that much ruck work these days, Stephen, and why? Well, I'm beginning to wonder why Michael Roach does. Uh, I don't think he's been all that effective today in the ruck. I think, uh, I think Damien Burke has done a terrific job, and I think he might be the, the ruckman of the future there. Dale Waitman appeals for and gets the free kick. Great player today, Waitman. All heart. Can't decide whether to go for the short pass. Jimmy Jess had let out. He's gone for Egan, but uh, sun right in his eyes, and it's a Geelong mark. Darcy in the back pocket. Tigers looking a bit tired now. Stoneham. Just a bit of keepings off around the 20 minute mark of the last quarter. Geelong know they've got it well and truly sewn up now. The pass out to John Fitzgerald again. It's Gerald's kick. Some good play down there by Jeff Hogg. One hundred and twenty-two plays ninety-seven at the twenty-minute mark of the last quarter on Pro Football's match of the day from the MCG. And for you Geelong fans, it's been one worth waiting for. I think it's going to uh, be fairly hard for Richmond to get up now, being four goals down at the 20-minute mark, Stephen. It's been an important win, uh, or will be an important win for Geelong. It'll push them up from 11th to 9th on the ladder. Mossop gets the tap. Morgan's in there. So too is Francis. Coming through is Landy. Landy's pass, a nice-looking kick, and finds its mark. Poole. Poole will go for Jess. 
the crumb gatherers, where are they? Philip Egan runs into goal, got all the time in the world, and Philip Egan puts through his third and Richmond's 15th. 19 points the difference. About uh, nine minutes to go, and Richmond have kicked four goals to two for the quarter. In fact, they've outscored uh, Geelong since half time. Really, the difference was just that uh, that burst of four goals by Gary Ablett in the second quarter. And uh, also, Michael Turner's two goals in this last quarter has really helped Geelong. Geelong haven't made uh, the silly mis mistakes up forward. And uh, Trevor Poole looks back at the one he missed uh, from point blank range, blank range when he hit the post. Waitman hitting the post in this last quarter. They were two... Uh, very, very costly errors. Also, the ball was forced down and Geelong capitalised straight away, which is unfortunate. 22 minutes in the last quarter. Geelong will take it out of the centre. But it'll be a Richmond mark and they're straight back into things. Palm going downfield, looking for Jess. He's pushed in the back. There'll be a free kick to the Tigers. The umpire says, bring it back. No I advantage rule. I don't understand that that advantage rule either. Sometimes they pay it and sometimes they don't. Well that was clearly a push in the back to Jess. He has kicked two goals too. And uh, the, the legendary kicking boot of the Ghost hasn't been all that red hot today. The drop punt holds up again. It's offline. Pool there takes the mark. The umpire says it was over the line. There'll be a conference. Breaks haven't gone our way today for uh, Richmond. They haven't gone your way for most of the second half of the season. Yeah, it's a bit of a disappointment uh, for Richmond to finish on this note because we, we did have some really good wins with sides above us mid-season. The pass out finds Michael Schultz. Exactly three goals the difference. A fumble and we'll have a throw in. 18-14 plays 15-14. The Tigers coming home strongly. But they've left their run just too late. Darcy back into the centre of the ground. Full short of everyone. The tap on over the back to Bright. Bright's got acres to play with if he feels like it. Ablett has a bounce. He's kicked seven. He's had two bounces. He's all by himself. Three bounces. Lines up. Goal number eight, is it? It is. What a goal from the centre of the ground by Gary Ablett. One of the plays of the day here at the MCG. Fantastic play by Gary Ablett. You can just see the versatility of that player that he can jump and leap and mark as he can, kick goals and also do them on the run. Terry Bright hand passed it to him short of the centre. Three bounces. Lines up and drives it through. Eight goals for and a match-winning performance from Gary Ablett. 65 goals for the season in 16 matches. Burke, another great player, gets it down. Eustace is underneath it. Burke again, and the umpire will bounce. Approaching time on, four goals the difference. Roach against Burke again. Bright. Been one of the best players on the ground despite the goal-kicking performances of, of Ablett and Turner. Morgan coming in, kicked off the ground. Eustace looks for Landy. Cole to Bruns, and the Tigers are off and running. Uh, the uh, We can get it out, the Cats back into attack, but it's Burton. The hand pass to Ania, fumbles, lucky to get out of it. He's as slippery as a piece of slope himself, and we'll have a bounce. You've had trouble with uh, David Palm and Johnny Ania all day. That I find it. I've had. I always have trouble with them. I find them very difficult to uh, to separate because they're both about the same size. They've both got darkish hair, and and five and six look similar from a distance. You're excused, David. Thank you, Robbo. Cats away again. The mark taken by Smith in front of Turner on this occasion. Transfers play back to the members' side of the ground and it will be a mark to Peter Francis.
Done plenty of running today, Peter Francis. Kick in, he's looking for Poole, but it's a good, safe mark. Poole looked in uh, second gear then. Tim Darcy. He's caught. Put under pressure. He'll go short looking for Bright. Terry Bright takes the diving, rolling mark. I think that uh, looking at the players today, it would be hard to go past um, Ablett, Bright and Turner as the three best players on the ground. Yes, yeah, no doubt that they've had um, Turner and uh, Ablett have been their match winners down in that forward line. But when, uh, right across the half-back line in the centre, um, he's just done everything right today. Actually, he's on the wing now, I think, on uh, Paul Morris. Nearly 27 minutes gone in the last quarter here at the MCG. The Tigers have kicked four goals, Geelong three goals in this last term. Waitman went for the went for the ruck and actually got the knockdown. The bounce over the top. Yates. Coming well again, Geelong off that half forward line, that 50 metre line. Great kick by Yates, hits the post. They've really come well, really concentrated hard at centre half forward, taking the crumb off that 50 metre, 50 metre line and having shots for goal. Makes a real difference. The near calls for the pass. And will take the free kick he was interfered with while waiting for the kick in. He should go straight back to Bauer, which he does. Bauer gets it going. Johnny Manton. In towards centre half forward. Egan can't quite mark it. He looks as though he's lost a bit of his, uh, his bounce. He's taken a couple of very heavy knocks today. Francis doubles back into trouble. He gets out of it again. Bruns gets the ball out. Two on one. Good play then by Cole. Keeps Geelong in with a chance. Cleve gets it out that time. He finds Fitzgerald. Been a fair player today. On his left foot. And Michael Turner in front takes the mark. Too experienced. Big Mark Lee's off the ground, Stephen. We're starting to fall off uh, down at back at centre half forward there. We're getting it to the half forward line and uh, Geelong are rebounding it. Ablett. And Mossop down there. Ablett bumped out. Here's the chance now for Morgan. Dashes in. Kicks the goal. And a great performance by Darren Morgan. He puts in his third. Geelong kicked their 20th. They're running away again. Geelong 2015, 135. Richmond 15, 14, 104. 28 and a half minutes gone in this final term at the MCG. And uh, the Cats looking forward to registering their seventh win of the season. And they've go they'll go... They will go from second bottom up to ninth position. The importance of crumbing again. Anyone can be a crummer, and if you can get to the fall of the plaque, you can do what uh, young Morgan did then, score goals in the teeth of the 10-yard square. Once again, Burke gets the ball out beautifully. Uh, Smith gets away from uh, Michael Turner on this occasion. Looking for Francis. Can't take the mark. Geelong go away through. Bright had a million kicks today. He finds Mossop. Mossop with the long hand pass. Here's a bit of danger. Mickey Turner going for goal number six. He lines up. Will he put it through? Offline. He wanted that for his 50th for the season. And Geelong 2016, Richmond 15 14. The margin 32 points. Out of the pack comes Brendan Bauer. Bauer around to Wally Eustace. He should have worn the golden boots today, Wally. Swings it back into play. Cool use uses body. his body terrifically. The hand pass onto a near. He's in trouble. Hand passes it back to Egan. Egan overruns the ball. Bright will come in. Gets out of it, Jackie Egan. Goodness knows how. The tap on's a good one. A near just overruns it and it will be cleared. Fitzgerald to Christensen. Francis, the hand pass out to Morrish. Morrish has left foot all Richmond down here. Can they make the most of it? That was hogged to Morrish. Morrish's kick. He's looking for Jess. Jess in the front position, can't take it. Tigers, good tackle. And the umpire says out of bounds. Mark Eustace down here in the wing position seems to have done something bad to his ankle. 
final scores. Final siren coming up here and there it is. Geelong have beaten Richmond at the MCG. Geelong 2016, 136 have defeated the Tigers 15, 14, 104. The winning margin 32 points and those main goal kickers for the Cats, Gary Ablett ended with eight. Michael Turner kicked five and Darren Morgan three. While for the Tigers, Trevor Poole and Philip Egan each kicked three apiece. This is Stephen Phillips, Michael Roberts, Wishing you all the best for the final series. We'll see you again next year. Thanks, David. You want to be a real footballer? I mean a real footballer. You've got to look like a real footballer. You've got to go for the mark. The VFL mark. Go for the mark. Go, go for the mark. mark. Go for the VFL mark at Meyer. Real footy guernseys, real footy shorts, and real supporters wear jumpers in all club colours and badges. Go for the mark. Go for the VFL mark at Meyer. Yes, the Cats proving far too good in the end. Uh, 20 goals, 16, 136 to Richmond's disappointing 15, 14, 104. A margin of 32 points favouring Geelong. And isn't it great to watch a champion in action? Gary Ablett doing it again today. He finished with eight. Mickey Turner giving him good support with five. Whilst for the Tigers, Egan and Paul each contributed three. Well, the game did turn out to be most important for Geelong because they have moved up the ladder. In fact, they hold down ninth spot now on the ladder ahead of Richmond on percentage only. Geelong finishing ninth, Richmond finishing tenth. Nonetheless, there's going to be some great finals action starting next week and I hope you'll be able to join us for all that action here on Pro Football.